That's great memories for all of us. Now joined by Suggs and Mike. Hello, gents. Hello. Hi there. Lovely to have How you with you? us. It's lovely. <laughs> lovely to be here. Lovely to be here. Do you ever look back at stuff like that? Do you ever see those old videos? Most and... evenings, yeah, when you <laughs> <laughs> when, when you get after dinner, get out the old <laughs> videos. A lot of them these days as well. <laughs> the old Ferrero <laughs> Rocher. <laughs> <laughs> Who wasn't want to see our old video? <laughs> no, when I get caught like watching to see that, it, it, I mean, yeah, oh, I know actually I won't say it. But, uh, but no, it, it's, it's it's almost worse than being caught watching porn. You know, when you're indoors <laughs> watching your own videos. <laughs> Dad, Dad, there's something about it. We get it. Every now and then, every now and then. We get it. Every now and then. And what I love about your story <laughs> is, I mean, your career has just spanned so so long, but you didn't get that easy break, did you? You know, we talk about nowadays it's a lot easier, I suppose, there's different social media platforms and we've had massive shows like The X Factor that have broke so many stars. Yeah. And, but you guys were knocking on doors and, you know, Irish pubs and however that worked. You were really sort of went about it the traditional way. Yeah, I mean, looking back, which you have to, obviously, when you're thinking about the past. <laughs> <laughs> it's normally how it works. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were kind of like the 60s when we started, mm -hmm. and that's how it was. You know, you, you made three singles, one album, and you toured, and you toured, and you toured, and you toured. And we got to a certain point where we started getting a bit exhausted with that process, but you're absolutely right. Um, but the other difference, I mean, whether to say it's easier now, I mean, when I look at Camden Town where we started, there were like 10 or 12 pubs that had function rooms where you yeah. could get a gig right. as a band. I don't know, you know, as an artist it really now, you like can... Anymore, I saw a great it? documentary about how Grimes started, you know, in mm. some clubs in the East mm -hmm, End, mm -hmm. and they were just doing it on their mobile phones. So there's always a way to be creative. But I think it's more difficult for bands now yeah. because there are very few venues where you can get a six, seven-piece band like us on stage. It's probably the reach that's easier. You put it on an app and you hit people, like, yeah. overnight, don't yeah. you? Whereas I suppose you're slowly building up momentum. But I don't... don't, don't I mean completely don't understand. Like Dermot, I'm an old man, you know, with <laughs> modern stuff. But um, take it's, it. it's this sort of chicken and egg. You know, they go, what are your socials? But you can't get your socials until you've actually done something. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you're supposed to sort of get them out of the ether. <laughs> Well, what is, it's interesting with you because you, you know, you're, you're a collection of very big personalities, madness. And you've, no, you know, I wouldn't go that far. You've gone, you've <laughs> sort of fallen out and got on and <laughs> taken hiatuses and stuff. But there's something that keeps you going. And, and is it like we all listen to the same music growing up? Because I, I came to see you. I've seen you many times, but I came to see you when you did the uh, was it the Dangerman sessions? Was that which is all all the stuff that you really loved when you were kids and reinventing it, right? So do you, was that how the band got together? Was it just that love of of old school dancehall and ska and a bit of punk and a bit of uh, yeah we we uh, I mean we share there was a big overlap between the stuff that we liked and we all also grew up at the same time but there was definitely something you know that's why we got together in a large part in the band because of our taste in music yeah so that was the kind of you know you I mean where we grew factor. up there was like gang I don't know about thirty or forty of us that I sort of was in the firmament of. And there were various ways it was going, you know, like mm. Mike said the other day, Wormwood Scrubs, you know, black cab driving, <laughs> sport, <laughs> all of which took far too much focus for me. But then there was us that were into music, you know, and then Mike and Chris and a couple of them started to take mm -hmm. it seriously mm -hmm. because everyone was talking about starting a band, but it was all just farting about. And we started rehearsing properly and then started to realise maybe this could be something, this, you yeah. know, yeah, could be could something, yeah, yeah. And obviously, Derm said, you know, you you did you had a few hiatuses. Coming back now and performing together after all that time, has anything changed? Do you instantly go back into, I'd imagine, old habits or how it was, or does it feel completely different? Yeah, how much we hate each other. That, that <laughs> came straight out of the <laughs> bag. <laughs> You fall back into those old roles. You know that being a band. You fall back into those old roles. Like, this, do you always go, you know, I know that so and so is going to like. This one's the talker. Exactly. This one's the, yeah. Do you, does it go back there or does it feel completely does it evolved? Different? That, that you have a certain characters and you presume that everybody's going to have the same character forever, you mean? And it creates well, just problems. the same yeah. sort of roles in that group dynamic, I suppose. No, not really, no. I mean, that's, a, that's not a good way to do it, I think. Um, it's better. You know, I mean, we, commu we, we communicate much more than we used to, 
Uh, Talking. And, and you can fall into habits. I mean... Amazing. There were, we had more work? people in the well, band. We were on the floor just, pulling each other's <laughs> hair out. We, we used to have a talk. lot of arguments. <laughs> we, had, we had more members in the band at one point and we had a lot of arguments and then, and then there were a bit less members in the band and then arguments started coming up again, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think it's kind of relevant in this day and age with all this polarisation going on that people have to talk to each other, you know, they have yeah. to communicate. communicate. I mean, we're yeah, trying yeah. to do that, I think, mm. yeah. And, I mean, and so to then hit you learn... the nail on the head with your question is tolerance, you know, tolerance yeah. of each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, mean, you I can't not... remember some journalist who said, you know, the sort of middle ground got burnt and scorched. Yeah. You're either on that side or yeah, that yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And but... we were like a microcosm of that, you know, what we fought during the lockdown. But when we got in the studio and started playing music together, it transcends yeah. all Let's that. Let's talk yeah. about that, because, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you're a London band, and what I've always loved about you is how you've evolved and you sort of tell London's story. And I lived over here in London half my life, and I love you for that, because, you, know, mm. uh, you know, Liberty and Norton Fulgate was one of my favourite albums. And that was, that was a, an ode to a certain part of London, wasn't it? So tell us a little bit about this, uh, the Salle of So where, what, what, what do you love to write about now? Well, like I said, we come out of that lockdown, like everybody else, slightly shocked and horrified by what had happened and were we ever going to get out of there. I wrote a song called Theatre of the Absurd, which was about I this vision of being locked in a theatre where the doors were all shut, the orchestra didn't know what the songs were, no-one knows what songs to sing. <laughs> and then I found out there was a whole Theatre of the Absurd in the 20s or 30s after the First World War, which was the surreality of Samuel Beckett, and then there was a French theatrical group that were writing plays in gobbledygook mm -hmm. because we all seem to not be able to communicate anymore. And then Mike said he didn't like that. He wanted to call it Salavi. And then you can see. <laughs> so he we won. talked. So we, yeah, there we and go. we found compromise <laughs> and we have Theatre yeah, of the Absurd presents Mad the Salavi. Yeah, there we are. Right. As small as possible. But <laughs> there you go. Yeah. We got it. And, and, and uh, a little birdie tells me that you are up against Taylor Swift for the number one spot. You know, I wouldn't know anything about that, but <laughs> please, <laughs> please, <laughs> people of a certain generation, <laughs> who would you want, us or...? Lovely Taylor Swift. <laughs> <laughs> Love, I there can't you quite go. say the words. There you go. We, we <laughs> don't, we don't. And then you're out on tour next week. Tell it, are you, are you, when's the last time you all played live together? Not for a little while, so it's just been a great period. You know, this album's been very well received yeah. and or could be number one. Let's not get carried away. <laughs> and the tour's pretty much sold out, so we couldn't be in a better place yeah. for a load of old, you know, Darzers, as my old <laughs> man used to say. <laughs> well, it's well, lovely to have the old Darzers with us. <laughs> thank you. Uh, it thank absolutely you. Is. This brand new album, Theatre of the Absurd. Well, Good luck with it. Present Salem. Let's see. Nice. Let's thank see you. what happens. Is that, that best up with the tour as well? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh,